Greetings and welcome to Tech Tips. Today we will look at control boxes. Focusing on one horsepower and smaller. Today we will answer the age-old question what is the difference between cap run and induction run boxes? So, breaking out my crayons you see here a simplified drawing of a stator with no windings. So, drawing some in. There we go. Did I miss some? No, I only drew the main windings. Why am I pausing here? To explain how a single phase motor works. Unlike a three phase motor that always have all windings engaged. To start a single phase motor, we need to imitate a three phase motor, this is where the missing start windings come into play. In a single phase three wire submersible motor, the starting components are in fact in the control box. And the number one selling control box for a one horsepower or smaller motor is a cap start induction run control box. Number one reason it sells the most. It's cheaper. But offers no real benefit for the motor. You see once the motor is started the induction run box turns off the start winding. Leaving a proverbial gap in the motor. Which in turn causes the motor to run higher amps and hotter. This gap can also be heard by many as a harmonic noise while the pump is running. You see the start windings are needed to jump the pump into spinning, once it is spinning the main winding can keep the motor and pump spinning but there is a better way. Now we see the complete motor with start and main windings. So how do you keep the start windings engaged? And what does it do for the motor? Let us look at the control boxes and see. Here we see a cap start, cap run control box. It has a start capacitor, these are typically black or dark brown. It is in the circuit only a fraction of a second to start the motor and then falls out of the circuit. The relay, the rectangular box, controls the start function. Now in a cap run box the relay would switch from start to run function and engage the run capacitor. What is the run capacitor? It is the metal encased capacitor seen here. Now I know you are probably wondering how can the start windings stay engaged when they are not as robust as the main windings? Because with the control of the start and run capacitor they are active but at a lower amp draw. Enough amps to keep the rotor engaged and reduce the amp load on the main windings but not so much they would be damaged. We will do a closer look at this in a moment. Here we see an induction run control box. See what is missing. No run capacitor. We still have a start capacitor and relay, but no run capacitor. Here the relay would upon starting the motor, drop the start windings so as not to damage them. Now we see the difference what does this mean to the system as a whole. To get a better view of what this means to the system we will break out the Pentec Electronics catalog. Note the numbers we will review are current at the time of this video. This first chart details a few things. First look at the R or red amps, which is the start windings. They are zero, because as we explained with an induction run control box the start windings are dropped out of the circuit. Now let's note the amps, full load amps on the Y or yellow and B or black line are 8.1. Service factor amps show 9.4. Another point of data to point out is watts. Full load the watts consumed is 1215. Service factor watts are running 1620. So how will the run capacitor impact the system? Looking at the data for the capacitor run control box you will notice the red or start portion of the windings now show an amp load but it is significantly lower as compared to the main windings. This also lowers the amp load on both the yellow and black line. It should also be noted that the watts consumed are lower. Granted the full load amps are only lower by 50 watts, but that is a savings in power consumption. It is also important to understand lower amp draw means less heat in the motor which is better for the windings. Now I am sure you are asking how can this be? The motor has to be different right? It cannot be as simple as what kind of box I am installing. The answer is yes, 
it is all determined by the control box for one horsepower and smaller motors. This chart shows the part numbers are shared between the two types of control boxes. The chart further shows the winding resistance is identical. It is all in the control box installed. The capacitor run box also impacts the fuse sizing. Looking at the circuit breaker sizing a one horse pump needs only a 15 amp breaker versus a 25 amp breaker if using an induction run control box. So, if it can impact the breaker size, what about wire sizing? So, let's answer the wire sizing question. As you see here, the motors are identical. So, the difference again is the control box. And as an example, if the complete wire run to the pump was 275 feet if you were using the induction run box you would have to jump to 12 gauge wire and your savings on the control box could be lost to the cost of the heavier gauge wire. So yes, the type of control box does impact the size and run of wire. So, what are the advantages really of the induction run box? Well besides upfront cost. Looking at the chart and reviewing what we learned the capacitor run box hit four major points. It lowers the amp draw, potentially keeping the motor running cooler. Lower watts consumption which can have a potential cost saving for example in an irrigation project. The capacitor run box could also reduce the size of fuse needed. And as we just saw last slide it can greatly impact the size and run of wire needed for the system. So, in the final analysis is it really worth saving a few dollars on the control box when you could give the customer a better system? How do you possibly get the customer to spend a little more? That answer to that is just what we talked about these last few minutes. Give the customer good information and a choice, and don't be surprised when they are willing to spend the extra dollars.